Aloha! In this video, let's take a look at contribution margin. In order to be successful in the uh, foundation for the long term, you're going to have to have a contribution margin of 30% or greater. When you inherit your company, when you start out, you have one product and your contribution margin on that product is 20%. One of your first tasks should be to make changes necessary to uh, increase your contribution margin to uh, over 30 percent. You'd like to get it as high as possible um, or at least to the point where you're maximizing total profits. So let, let's look at, uh, this is round three in this particular industry. You can see that uh, I'm, I'm looking here at uh, Baldwin. Baldwin um, has high sales but uh, but a low contribution margin of uh, 28 percent that's not terribly low but it's lower than what we'd like to get okay then you can take a look at another company look at Erie down here uh, Erie has um, quite a bit less um, money coming in they have 61 million dollars in sales but they have a 35.4 percent contribution margin um, and, and because of that, you can see that uh, their profits were much higher. So even though they had less money coming in, they kept $4 million in profits at the end, whereas Baldwin, with a lower contribution margin, uh, only kept $1.4 million out of their $73 million that they, uh, that they brought in in revenue. So uh, let, let's take a look at this and see... Uh, what we can do exactly to increase contribution margin. <clears throat> Remember that contribution margin, uh, as we're speaking of it right now, is a percentage. And the uh, contribution margin percentage equals the price of your product minus the cost of goods sold, which we sometimes call COGS, divided by the price. Now, what's COGS? The cost of goods sold in foundation is just the material cost plus the labor cost. So if you take the price minus the material cost minus the labor cost uh, divided by the price, you'll get a contribution margin percentage. Let's go down to the production page on page 4 and see what's going on here. So we're comparing Baldwin and Erie. Okay, here's page four. <clears throat> now Baldwin had, had uh, um, a lot of sales here. Um, they have uh, this Baker product. They sold a thousand, had 578 left over. So they didn't sell as many as they would like to have because they have six months of inventory left over. So no star for inventory here on Baker. And then they also have this, uh, they have two high-tech products, Billy and Bamboo. Um, their, their inventory, ending inventory on Bamboo is okay, but their ending inventory on Billy is also too high. You'd like to have no more than one-sixth of your total production left over in inventory at the end. Let's go down here and look at this column. This column is contribution margin. <clears throat> okay, so we can see that Baker uh, had a contribution margin of 32%, so that's not bad in terms of contribution margin. But Billy and Bamboo were both under 30%. So their overall contribution margin is less than uh, 30%. We we'll go down here and look at, at um, Erie. Uh, Erie has two products. Uh, one product is Eat. Um, they also uh, didn't forecast very well, had a lot of uh, inventory left over on Eat. And they have a high-tech product called Ed. We'll go over here and look at their contribution margin on their low-tech product is EAT, 
is 40%, and on their high-tech product is 29%. So overall, they have higher than 30% uh, uh, contribution margin. Well, how do we figure that? It's right here. So they're selling EAT for $31. So that's the price. Each one is $31. Minus $8.92 for material cost. Minus $7.58 for labor cost. Leaves 40% of the price left over. We call it a contribution margin because that 40% is then uh, available to contribute to paying off the fixed costs. Once the fixed costs are paid off, then that 40% of every sale goes towards profit. On the other hand, if we look up here at Baker, uh, we can see that um, their price is $30.99, just a penny less than EAT. But they're spending $9.60 in uh, material cost, <clears throat> which is uh, <clears throat> about 75 cents higher than EAT per unit, and they're spending $9.37 in labor cost, which is almost $2 per unit higher than EAT. Um, how are they doing that? Well, <clears throat> one of the ways they're doing it, let's look at material cost. So uh, MTBF here for uh, Baker is 18,000. And for EAT, it's uh, 19,000. So theirs is actually higher. The big difference here, if you look over here, is in this number, which is automation. EAT has 80% automation. And Baker has 50% automation. So the more automation you have, the less labor cost you have per unit. And that's the main way that, uh, um, that uh, Erie was able to get their higher contribution margin. So if you want to increase margin, uh, there's only a couple of things you can do. You can raise the price. But there's a trade-off for raising the price, and the trade-off is that you'll sell fewer units. Conversely, you can cut material costs. How do you cut material costs? You make your sensors bigger, slower, or with lower MTBF. You make them less reliable. Of course, if you make them bigger, slower, and less reliable, you'll sell fewer units. You can also cut labor costs. And there's two ways to cut labor costs. Well, there's more than two ways, but the, uh, the fastest ways to cut labor costs are uh, don't work your employees overtime, uh, produce everything on the first shift, uh, or add automation. Now, if you uh, cut your labor costs through no overtime or adding automation, there is no downside. You won't sell fewer units just because you made your um, made your product more efficiently. So you want to increase contribution margin? That's what you have to do. There's a, there are trade-offs involved. What you need to do is you need to find the sweet spot. Find where what's coming in by increasing the contribution margin exceeds what you lose by selling fewer units. Uh, that's it on contribution margin.